I know, I know, I'm a, I'm quite a bit early uh, this morning, but it's uh, uh, it's Saturday morning cartoons nonetheless. But anyway, I've got uh, uh, some things I, I need to do today, uh, uh, starting just about showtime. Uh, I have some uh, just ceremonial duties that I have to take care of on this particular Saturday, but I'm going to finish up this uh, this little uh, series. It's turned out to be a three-part series on the elements of, uh, of Goeshiki vocation. And when I say elements, I I'm not speaking specifically about fire, water, air, or spirit elements. Uh, but uh, uh, components of or or the um, uh, format of, I guess, uh, uh, Goeshiki vocation. What I've got here, uh, this is a signal of uh, uh, Andromalius, okay, the 72nd spirit of the Goetia, uh, has been uh, a, a very uh, loyal and helpful uh, uh, spiritual force uh, and I just wanted to show you this this sort of funk show you how funky I am I mean I've got beautiful beautiful uh, things that people have sent me uh, all 72 uh, spirits of the Goetia in beautiful sort of pewter thing with a, with a on the back it you know they they've all got the the pentagram of Solomon like they're supposed to and everything else. Uh, but the, I, I told you I'm kind of a funky guy, you know. Uh, and this is just a paper one, that, but I made it myself, okay. I drew it out myself. I colored it myself and everything else. It looks pretty sloppy. And it's just out of paper. And uh, on the back, I've got uh, uh, the pentagram of Solomon. But I've done it in such a way that, see, this is a, just a plastic cover on both sides. And the back plastic cover, I don't know if you can see it, actually has the pentagram on it there, too. Uh, but when I work with other spirits, I just uh, uh, remove this one and, and put another one in and keep this back. It, I know it looks cheesy, okay? Um, but I don't care. It's mine. It's magic, okay? And uh, there's the other one, uh, like another one from Aura Boss, things like that. I'm showing you these things because uh, uh, we were talking about them, and uh, uh, beginning magicians uh, uh, sometimes uh, feel discouraged that they can't uh, uh, do this particular uh, uh, technique of ceremonial magic because they can't afford gold this and gold that, and and uh, they're they're not talented enough to now if you got the will you got the way and if you can't make things out of paper uh, magical you can't make things out of gold magical uh, talked yesterday but well maybe we'll get into it uh, later on I've got some things to show you but here's where we picked up uh, or we'll where we'll pick up today from where we left off uh, yesterday. The following is a summary outline of a Goeshiki vocation. But please avail yourself of the above mentioned texts. Okay, the above mentioned texts were the uh, the Lesser Key of Solomon uh, itself, and uh, I also suggested that uh, for a for a handbook that you uh, might also uh, appreciate the, the Alistair Crowley's Illustrated Goetia, which uh, 
uh, Dr. Hyatt and I uh, put out a number of years ago. And also, if you have, if you happen to have, uh, let's see, is it around here someplace? Uh, my Key to Solomon's Key uh, has a handbook of Goetia too. Uh, so I highly recommend that, that you avail yourself of the original source material and uh, which is the Lesser Key of Solomon or Goetia and, uh, and see what the, the source material actually has to say. Uh, before beginning a Goetia Key vocation, ask yourself the following questions. Do I have a very good reason to raise the spirit? Do I feel absolutely justified and competent to perform the operation? Now I'm going to digress for a second. It's good to feel unambiguously justified, okay? And But you're going to have to probably give yourself some credit as far as if you'll ever feel truly competent to perform the operation, okay? In other words, I don't want you to stop to, to give up trying to do Goetic magic because you don't feel absolutely uh, confident that you're competent to do it. N no. Uh, give yourself a little credit and said, I think I'm probably competent to do this. Okay. Be satisfied with that. Move on with the ceremony. Okay. At least that's my personal advice. Do I have a sufficient emotional tie to the object of the operation? If there is no such emotional link, the evocation will most likely fail. The desire to evoke the spirit must reach the emotional strata of the magician's psyche. That is where the abodes that is the abode of the Goetic spirits. In other words, the magician operating from the inspiration of the Neshama uses the Ruach to reach down into the Nepish, the, the in order to get a get a spirit, yeah. all of those parts of the soul are working, are working together, to have the uh, the authority and the power, and the wisdom, to direct the the operation. So, the desire to evoke a spirit must reach the emotional strata of the magician's psyche, for that is the abode of the Goetic spirits. That's why you. Think that you're reaching into hell. That in order to do Goetia, you need the courage to reach down into hell yourself and pull out those little suckers and get them to work for you. Is it my unambiguous will to succeed in the operation? Do I have the courage to plumb the depths of hell to achieve my ends? Be brutally truthful with yourself. If there is any doubts as to your answers to any of these questions, cancel the ceremony or postpone it until such a time when there are none. If you are resolute in your will to proceed, then do the following. One, in a clean, uncluttered room, draw, tape, or otherwise make a circle approximately nine feet in diameter. Upon the circle, 
Write the divine names sacred to your personal form of spiritual discipline. 2. About three feet east of the circle, draw, tape, or otherwise make a triangle, each side measuring two and one-half to three feet. Upon the three sides, write words of power sacred to your personal form of spiritual discipline. Inside the triangle, draw a circle. Within this circle, place an incense burner, incense, and a parchment or paper copy of the seal of the spirit you wish to invoke. Prior to the ceremony, bathe with full intention of cleansing the body in preparation for this serious work. Put on a clean magical robe, reflective of your highest initiatory degree. This robe should also bear the image of a hexagram, so to identify with the macrocosm. Now, I'm going to show you something, if I can find it here quickly. Okay, that's the hexagram. This is what binds you to the power above you to give you the authority to command the forces beneath you. Now you can make it all sorts of fancy. If you want, you can, you can dedicate your robe to the ceremony and sew it on the robe. But I just pin it to my robe. And this is a badge I show you. Uh, let's see. It's my juror badge. I walked off. <laughs> I walked off one day uh, from jury duty. I'm supposed to turn it back in, but I thought it was cool. There's my Orange County jurors badge. Okay, okay. I digress, but it is Saturday morning cartoons. Um, arm yourself with the wand and wear the medallion displaying the spirit seal on one side and the pentagram to show mastery on the other, which is just what I did here. There's the spirit seal on one side and the pentagram on the other, okay? Um, now, uh, to digress a moment, where it says arm yourself with a wand, uh, I'm saying arm yourself with a wand instead of the sword or the dagger at the preliminary evocation of the spirit. Uh, you, uh, my logic is you're evoking the spirit with your with your will, and that will should be a, a, a force that's infinitely greater than your power of. Uh, or, or your ability to to threaten or intimidate or to uh, uh, show your uh, uh, doubts in your power so that you might feel it necessary to use a defensive weapon. Now, you want to come in with, with, with more... Uh, confidence than that. So I brandish the wand for the, at least the initial uh, evocation of the spirits. If I have to uh, whip it up again to uh, uh, put the screws to it, then I use the sword. Okay. Um, Prior to entering the circle, purify the temple with water and consecrate it with fire. Those little ceremonies, uh, brief ceremonies, are found everywhere. This can be done as elaborately or as simply as your sense of art demands. Entering the circle, first perform the less, lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram. This is my suggestion, okay. And then, uh, of course, that is in... The, the appendix of this book. 
How much would you pay? Okay. Um, recite the preliminary invocation of the Goetia or the first and second Enochian call or the conjurations or conjurations of your choice. As I mentioned earlier, the idea of the conjurations is to get you into an altered state of consciousness. And you may have your own particular way of, of, uh, of doing that, a mantra or barbarous words of evocation. Or in this case, uh, utilize the ready-made uh, preliminary invocation of the Goetia or uh, the Enochian first and second call. Greet the spirit courteously upon its arrival. Now, oh well, I may digress a little later here. Politely give it a specific, well thought out charge and demand a positive answer. Politely give it license to depart, being careful to stipulate that it carry out its order orders without harm to you or your loved ones. Banish the temple with the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram and wait until such time as you cannot feel any residual of the spirit's presence. In other words, banish, banish a couple times if you need to, just so that the spooky feeling uh, disappears from the room. Part 12, snap out of it. Do whatever it takes to return to everyday objective consciousness. Sometimes I just kind of slap my own face and yell, Coca-Cola, or something like that. Okay. If you still feel spooky and magical, banish again. Then break down the temple. Now, failure of the spirit to perform, as promised, requires that you evoke the spirit again and issue a threat. And this time is when I might pull out the sword. Failing again, re-evoke and torment the spirit in the firebox. Failing again, re-evoke for the purpose of destroying the seal completely. While the experience is fresh in your mind, sit down and write a detailed record of the operation. Okay, those are the 15 uh, steps of uh, Goetia's evocation. Final thoughts on Goetia's evocation. For many, the above procedure may seem a childish excursion into role-playing an adult Dungeons and Dragons but isn't day-to-day -day life a role-playing game? Perhaps we should simply view Goetia's evocation as a formal, conscious dialogue and relationship between the conscious mind, the magician, and the portion of the unconscious mind, the spirit. The will of the magician to control the spirit is focused by the physical and mental preparations of the ceremony of evocation, and the spirit appears either objectively or subjectively upon the seal in the triangle. This vision alone serves to charge the seal by indelibly imprinting the magician's unconscious mind with the image. Now, when I say the spirit appears objectively or subjectively in the triangle, I really more or less am saying, chances if you actually seen a holographic ectoplasmic manifestation of the spirit in the in the triangle or in the smoke in the triangle is probably unlikely but it must appear in your mind's eye but not just imagining it in the triangle after everything you've gone through for the evocation, 
you will feel the presence, the unmistakable presence of the uh, of of the spirit, whether you can see it with the cones and rods of your eyes or only in your mind's eye, it's there. You link the feeling with the image and imprint that on your mind. Years from now, the magician may forget that he or she has ever performed that particular evocation, but the unconscious mind will not forget. Once a spirit has been evoked, a permanent relationship is formed, which can only be severed if the magician chooses to update his or her unconscious mind with another imprinted image. This can be done ceremonially with the same care and preparation expended in the original evocation. A Goetic spirit, once evoked, is an awakened giant, ready to serve you. You do not want to forget there is an awakened giant in your cellar. This is why one should never forget where he or she has put an activated seal. Traditionally, such items are stored in an elaborately decorated box. Or otherwise, luxurious boxes or bags. Each time the magician's eyes fall upon the container, he or she is reminded of that evocation of the spirit and of how the spirit is pledged to the magician's service. This conscious reinforcement of the relationship serves to recharge both the magician and the spirit. Each time you see or think about the seal housed in its special container, you should feel the same warmth of satisfaction as a dog's master feels when he or she is able to feed their loyal pet a special treat. Now, speaking of the analogy of, uh, of uh, your favorite dog or, or pet, this idea, this feeling I'm talking about when the when the spirit appears appears in the triangle is almost exactly if this if you've ever done this or even if you can imagine it happening, you've got you've got a dog, you've got a pet dog, you love your dog, everything else. Uh, but the dog is a separate consciousness. It's a separate consciousness in the room. Okay. Now imagine that if you would uh, fall asleep on the couch, okay, and you're snoring blissfully away on the couch, and you're drifting in and out of the dream state and and uh, and uh, nap state and everything else, and all of a sudden you feel a living presence in the room looking at you. And you open one eye and you see that your dog is staring at you. That feeling, there is another intelligence in this room and they are focusing in on me and you look up and there actually is there's a there's a dog going you know that's the same feeling that you get when you're sure that your evocation has just called that goishic spirit into the triangle and it's there so start talking to it start giving it its orders don't mess around, no need to be rude, no need to get into any unnecessary conversation whatsoever. 
You must have in mind exactly what the object of your operation is, and it should be on the tip of your tongue, and you should deliver that charge with no hesitation whatsoever. You get a, a affirmative acknowledgement that the order has been received, and stop it. No more. Okay, goodbye. License to depart. No nonsense. Okay. That's all you need. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, how do you share your good fortune and spiritual success with the spirit? This question can only be answered by each magician. I'm reminded of the old American cowboy movies where the, the hero rescues the girl and captures the bank robbers, but only after he's been pulled out of a deadly pool of quicksand by his faithful wonder horse. In the really old movies, the cowboy doesn't kiss the girl at the end of the film, he kisses the horse. In other words, give credit where credit's due. You must recognize that your evocation is linked to the spirit's evolution. This recognition can be private and entirely internalized. In my particular magical spiritual discipline, I seek union with a divine counterpart, which is called in Western Hermeticism, the Holy Guardian Angel. By no stretch of the imagination have I yet to achieve complete communion with this being. But I've been vouchsafed glimpses in moments of ecstatic wonder when I realize how briefly, however briefly, that I am part of an unimaginable, profound, greater life. Using my metaphoric vocabulary, these moments are my holy guardian angel attempting to raise me up and please remember that i wrote this uh, this uh 20 years ago 30 years ago excuse me to a goetic spirit you are like the holy guardian angel just as there are people in the world who are so base and ignorant that they'll end up this incarnation without ever being moved by a spiritual impulse. So too are there Goetic spirits who may not be ready to be calmed down enough to have a relationship with you. Only you will know the details of your relationship with the spirits and only you will know how to share your good fortune and spiritual success. And that's my thoughts on the elements of uh, Goetic evocation, as I've outlined in, I believe, Appendix 4 of this book. What follows is uh, a complete uh, copy of the preliminary invocation of the Goetia and other little treats like the illustrations and, and such. There's an example of a modern uh, circle and triangle and there's a pentagram of Solomon hexagram of Solomon so that's it for Saturday morning cartoons uh, on this first day of July 2023 Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love and your will.